Once upon a time, Prince George arrived home after a day of exploring. Hello dear, said Mummy Pig. How was your day? It was fantastic, he replied. And look what I found. And he can fly too, so he demonstrated. So mummy, can I keep him? Sorry George, he's far too dangerous to keep. Take him back to somewhere safe. So a sulking George flew the dragon away. He didn't want to lose his dragon, so he hid it nearby. Nobody knows you're here, so you've got to be quiet and behave, and if you hear me whistle, come right away. Understand? The dragon nodded and George went home. Unfortunately, the dragon had other ideas. Pepper then arrived home and noticed the burnt truck. There's a burnt truck out here, she said. Do you know anything about it? Uh oh, said George, and he whistled. I told you to get rid of the dragon, George, said Mummy Pig. Don't worry, I will this time, he replied. You could take him to Dragon Island, suggested Pepper. Everyone thought this was a good idea. The dragon was really happy there. Suddenly, George woke up. It had all just been a dream, he thought. Or had it?
Peppa Pig and her family were on their holidays. They were staying in a villa by the beach. We're going to have a barbecue today, said Daddy Pig, and we've got some special friends coming over to join us. Peppa and George were excited. They decided to go on their dune buggy while Daddy Pig lit the barbecue. This is fun, said Peppa. Not too far away, Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse were getting ready to catch the Mickey Mouse Express train to take them to the beach. They'd been invited to a barbecue. The train arrived and off they went. When they arrived at the beach, Daddy Pig greeted his friends. Pepper and George came running to see them. Come and play with us, they said. Daddy Pig told Pepper and George not to go too far away because they were starting to cook the food. Mickey and Minnie went to the water's edge, but nobody noticed George slip away. George was in the dune buggy, but he'd never driven it before and couldn't actually reach the steering wheel. Suddenly there was an almighty splash as the buggy went right into the sea. Everybody looked to see what caused the splash. George, are you alright? said Daddy Pig. Yes, said George just a little stuck. Mummy Pig suggested they get Grandad Dog to pull the buggy out and Daddy Pig went to call him. Grandad Dog had a sleepy garage in a sleepy town and was very pleased to help. It didn't take him long to get there. He backed his truck into position, attached the hook to the buggy and got ready to pull. The buggy moved easily and was soon back on the sand. Thank you, said George. Daddy and Mummy Pig went to see if George was all right. He promised not to drive the buggy again on his own. Daddy Pig thanked Grandad Dog and asked him if he wanted to join them for some food. He agreed. Daddy Pig gave everyone a burger and they enjoyed the rest of the day on the beach. Ice creams from the cafe, asked Masha to Pepper. It's such a lovely day today. Great idea, agreed Pepper. We might find some surprises in them. I'll go first. And she hopped aboard James. the cafe and chose an orange ice cream. This looks delicious, she said to James and they returned to the platform. I 
wonder what's inside, smiled Masha to Peppa. It's Rarity from My Little Pony. My turn next, said Masha, and off she went. Masha chose a banana ice cream and jumped on James. Smile, Pepper. Let's see what surprise we have. It's Queen Elsa. I'm going to get a strawberry ice cream, cried Peppa, and she jumped aboard James. Do you think she'll find a strawberry ice cream? I hope it's a fun toy inside, said Masha. Wow, it's flounder! Go, smiled Masha, and off she went. Masha chose a black currant ice cream. cried Peppa.
David Shopkins' Fifi Flower. Well done, Masha and Pepper. What a great collection of surprises you have.
Pepper was very excited. She was going to meet her friend Susie Sheep at the cafe and she couldn't wait. Thomas arrived to take her and Pepper hopped on board. They were steaming along merrily when suddenly Thomas started to behave very strangely. Oh dear, sighed Thomas. I'm not feeling very well. I'm sorry, Pepper, but I'm going to need a mechanic to fix me. Don't worry, Thomas, replied Pepper. I can walk from here. I'm sure it's not too far away. And off she went. Now I think this could be a shortcut, she said to herself. Oh dear, Pepper didn't know where she was. She was lost. Suddenly, Pepper heard a friendly voice. Are you okay? asked the fairy. I'm Holly, she continued, and this is my friend Ben. I'm Pepper, replied Pepper, and I'm afraid I'm a bit lost. I'm looking for the cafe to meet my friend Susie. Don't worry, Pepper, said Ben. We can help you find your friend. Follow us to our magical castle. So Pepper did. Wow, exclaimed Pepper. Your castle is amazing. We can show you some really cool things, smiled Ben, as they all went into the castle. Inside, Holly pointed out the magical cauldron. If you turn the ladle, the fridge opens and a picture on the wall appears, she said. And Pepper watch. Cool, she smiled. Would you like a magical fairy dress? asked Holly. Oh yes please, answered Pepper, and so they went to Holly's room. Holly waved her magic wand and Pepper twirled around very quickly. Her red dress transformed into a beautiful white dress and a crown appeared on her head. I love it, smiled Pepper. Follow me down the secret slide, smiled Holly, and so Pepper did. Ben opened the door. There you are, he smiled. Holly appeared first and then Peppa followed. That was fun, cried Peppa. This is where we keep our book of spells, said Pen. Let's go on the leaf slide, suggested Holly. Ben went first, followed by Holly and then Peppa. Shall we have a ride on a lily pad roundabout? suggested Peppa. So they did. That was fun, smiled Peppa, but I think I really should try to find Susie now. No problem, said Holly. Our magical swan boat can take you. Peppa thanked her new friends for the lovely time she'd had and hoped to see them again soon. Goodbye, Peppa, replied Ben and Holly together. We're glad you like our little kingdom. Pepper climbed into the swan boat and began to float on the water. Suddenly, with a flash of tiny stars, Pepper found herself outside the cafe with Susie. Hello, Pepper. You took a long time to arrive, said Susie. 
You won't believe where I've been, smiled Peppa, as she told Susie all about it in the cafe. wondered what goes on inside Peppa's head? Let's find out. Oh, fantastic, smiled Joy. It's Thomas. We're going on a train ride. Yay! Oh no, Thomas has had a lot of accidents lately. What if Peppa fell off? cried Fear. She'll be fine, answered Joy brightly. Peppa's never fallen off before. It'll be fun. She might really hurt herself, said Sadness. That Thomas will have to stop taking passengers, cried Anger. It's too dangerous. Come on, guys, lighten up, continued Joy. She's climbing aboard, said Disgust. I wish it was Emily instead of Thomas. It's a frozen egg, smiled Joy. I hope the toy won't be broken inside, said Sadness. Yay, it's an Olaf rubber, said Joy brightly. That's not a toy, answered Disgust. She's going for another egg. Be careful, Peppa, said Fear. It's an inside out egg, cried Anger. Why is my picture not on the egg? He said loudly. It's a good one of sadness though, replied Joy. It's you disgust, said sadness. What a shame you've got one eye closed. It's a nice little toy though, replied Joy positively. She's getting a third egg, said Anger. Hurry up, we haven't got all day. It's a kinder fairy egg, announced Disgust. I hate fairies. I hope it's not a bad fairy inside, cried Fear. It's Iridessa, smiled Joy. She's beautiful. I hope Peppa's next egg isn't broken, said Sadness.
It's a pepper egg, said Anger. We better not get another candy cat. We've got five already. The models are amazing, though, continued Joy. Dog said disgust. I don't like boy characters. I wish it was Mummy Pig. I think Pepper's going for the last egg, cried Fear. Don't fall, Pepper. It's a My Little Pony egg, said Sadness. I hope the toy isn't missing inside. It won't be, answered Joy positively. It's Pinkie Pie. We've got that one already, said Anger. It doesn't matter if we have two of them, smiled Joy. Well, I think Peppa's had a lot of fun today, and we've got some great surprises. <laughs> Peppa, George and Zoe we're going for a picnic in their camper van. Mummy and Daddy Pig were busy today, so Kitty was driving. They all got in and off they drove. <laughs> this seems like a good spot, said Kitty. I'm hungry, said George. Let's eat. They all helped get the table and chairs out of the camper van. <laughs> Where's George? said Zoe. George had found the food, but the hamper was too heavy for him. Pepper took the hamper and brought it to the table. <laughs> I'm really hungry now, said George. Pepper was just about to get the food out when they heard a train in the distance. Look, said Zoe, it's Thomas, Annie and Clarabel. They all watched as Thomas went past. Come on, said George, the food. But they then heard another train. This time it was the Hello Kitty train and on board was their friend Susie. They all waved. The food was now on the table. But at that precise moment, it started to pour with rain. I don't mind wet food, said George. But the girls started packing it all away. George had a few problems with the table, but they still got everything packed away. What should we do now, said George. I really am very hungry. Kitty said she knew somewhere where they could eat, and they drove off in the rain. When they reached the cafe, they all saw the cakes in the window. Wow! George was out first, but they all quickly followed. Inside, in the dry, they ordered a plate of the biggest cupcakes you've ever seen. They all helped themselves, and George ate his in one gulp. What a greedy pig you are, George, said Pepper. They all finished their cakes and went outside. It had stopped raining by now and the cafe was next to a park. Let's go on the slide, 
said George, and they all followed. The rain had made muddy puddles at the bottom of the slide, and one by one, they all landed in them, getting covered in mud. They all agreed it had been a very good day.
It was a beautiful day, so Thomas agreed to give Peppy Pom Poms, Bun Bun Sticky Icing, Peppa and Pedro a lift to the park. Bun Bun decided to take her pet sheep with her. As soon as they got there, Bun Bun put her sheet down to let it run around. Then Peppy and Bun Bun went and played on the swings. And Peppa and Pedro played on the slide. They then swapped over. And finally, they had to go on the seesaw. They were about to go home when Peppa noticed something. Where's your pet sheep gone, Bun Bun? she asked. Oh no, Bun Bun replied. I can't see her. Please could you help me find her? Everyone agreed, so they started looking. They looked under the table, by the slide and by the swings. Found her, cried Peppy. She was stuck at the top of the tree. <coughs> Peppa and Pedro tried to reach her, but she was just too far away. I know, said Thomas. 
I'll fetch Goofy. He has a helicopter. And off he went. It wasn't long before Goofy arrived. He hovered close to the tree and the sheep hopped aboard. Goofy then landed the helicopter and gave Bum Bum back her sheep. Thank you Goofy, she said. No problem, he replied. Thomas then arrived to take everyone home. It had been an eventful day. Zoe Zebra called at Peppa Pig's house to see if she wanted to go to the park. Yes, please, said Peppa. Can George come as well? Of course, said Zoe. The three of them got on board the waiting James and off they set. It was a really windy day and the tall trees were swaying. When they got to the park, James had to leave. The wind was really strong. It was a very good day for flying a kite. But a very bad day to play with a beach ball. On the swing, Emily went back easily but couldn't swing forwards much at all. George went to the treehouse. The ladder had been lost, so they always had to climb up the slide. Ooh, there goes someone's balloons, said George. Rebecca went up the treehouse as well, and poor Susie got blown over on the ground. Pepper started flying her kite as well. Then a big tree in the playground started shaking and was pulled out of the ground by the wind. It crashed against the slide on the treehouse, trapping Rebecca and George at the top. There was no ladder and they couldn't get past the tree. Everyone came running. Luckily, no one was hurt. Then they heard a train coming. It was Hello Kitty. Peppa asked Kitty if she could help in any way. Hmm, she thought, I have a plan. And she then moved her train around the track. Kitty got out a rope and asked Peppa if she could tie it around the tree. She did with some help from Pedro. Kitty tied the other end to her train. With everyone standing well back, Kitty started the train. The tree moved easily and was pulled well away from the treehouse. George and Rebecca could now slide their way down to the ground. Kitty returned and they all thanked her very much for her help.
it was Elmo's birthday, so Pepper and George were bringing him some lollipops as presents. Oh bother, said Thomas. Something's not right. How are we going to give Elmo these lollipops? asked Pepper. Fortunately, Blaze was passing by. Hello Blaze, said Thomas. I've broken down. Please can you help us take these lollies to Elmo? Of course, hop on. So George took a lolly and got on Blaze and he sped off. Happy birthday Elmo, said George. We got you some lollies. This is the first one. So Elmo ate it. Olaf was inside. I'll go and get the rest, said George. So he hopped back on Blaze and they went back to Thomas and Pepper. I'm back, George said. Good news, I'm fixed, replied Thomas. So George boarded the truck. If you need my help again, just give me a whistle, said Blaze, and he left. The journey was going well, until... I've broken down again, said Thomas, and he whistled. Blaze arrived very quickly. Sorry to bother you, Blaze, but I've broken down again. It's alright, Thomas, said Blaze. So George took another lolly and climbed on Blaze to take it to Elmo. Here's lolly number two, Elmo, cried George. The Incredible Hulk was inside. We'll go and get another. I should be up and running now, said Thomas. So George got on and Blaze drove off. Oh, not again, sulked Thomas. Oh dear, Thomas, you're not having a great day, are you? Let's go, George. Here's lolly number three. Kevin the pirate minion was inside. Ah. Ah. One left, said George. I should be able to make it now, said Thomas, and off he went. Luckily this time, he did make it. Happy birthday Elmo, they all said, and they gave him his last lolly. Donna 
Donatello was inside. Elmo thanked Pepper and George for their presents. What a lovely collection!